Welcome back to Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin, and we are broadcasting from the Thacker Jewelry Studios. View loose diamonds, custom design, and more at thackerjewelry.com. We've got uh, Dave King on the line, but even more importantly, we've got... Uh, sorry, Dave. We've got uh, Sheriff Kelly Rowe. Well, yeah. Oh, hold up here. <laughs> what? Uh, you know, I, I'm important, too. Good morning, Sheriff Rowe. Uh, hey, good morning, Jim. How are you all? We're doing well. Oh, uh, we're good. Well, it, it's good to have you on the show. Always uh, love when we do. Uh, well, just tell us how are things at the jail. You got all the, the uh, everybody bedded down, and uh, it's, I think you say it's like the lights. We'll leave the light on for you. Is that right? Uh, that's exactly right. You know, that is uh, the, the Tom Burdett and me. But uh, now things are things are rocking along out there. Of course, our population's increasing a little bit, and, you know, signs of... Tell, tell us why. Well, the, you know, the key thing is, is, you know, with all of the reactions... Having to do with you know with COVID nineteen, you know that's that's just hit us from all angles. And you know I was saying this months ago that you know you watch it'll be the jails that'll be you know end up being the kind of the epicenter of of, of where everything you know ultimately kind of rests at because you know you've got the courts had to slow down. Obviously, much more challenging to to, to be able to get through those processes and bring people and witnesses and victims and defendants and everything into the courthouse. And then once, you know, once this became problematic for the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, you know, our penitentiary system, well, then they stopped taking prisoners well back into May and are just barely starting to take them now. And even then with a whole lot of considerations and a whole lot of requirements on the, the local entities to have to even get them moved uh, across the state to, to wherever they want to intake them at. So it's, uh, like I said, unfortunately, when you start stopping or slowing some of these massive systems that we have across the state, it's going to it's gonna impact somewhere. And in this particular context, it's it's uh, everyone's county jail. Yeah. So, uh, 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 Sheriff, I've got a question. It's something that uh, I've had multiple people ask me. Um, about and that is uh, the uh, I guess uh, those that are being arrested for um, oh I guess uh, trafficking uh, uh, sex trafficking uh, as well as uh, inappropriate uh, actions with children um, do we have uh, are we actually busting more people for that or is that something we're just seeing uh, more in the news? And and also, uh, do we have a way that that we're doing that? I mean, do we have like uh, adults that are getting online and actually um, uh, finding these people? Uh, well, you know, and then you know, beware. I think to those individuals that uh, indulge in those types of lifestyles, because again, they they may think they're talking to a you know a teenage young girl or something, and you know that could be a thirty plus year old. Uh, you know, officer sitting in there, but I think you know a lot of it comes is 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 you know with the with the onset of social media, and I can remember just from a personal note, and, and you know, and being in this profession, you know, our initial feelings about social media back to the MySpace and the forum boards and some of that type of stuff, and I think I'm even calling those wrong, but neither here nor there, you know, that these were quickly becoming uh, real dens for this kind of behavior. And uh, as that has progressed now, and you know all these new new things they have to use Facebook and Snapchat and all of that, uh, it's just made it that much more prolific. And so, I, I think a part of it that you you know in terms of the question you know questions you're getting asked, absolutely, you're seeing a lot more targeted enforcement and a lot of different strategies being implemented to you know to zero in on these individuals and and uh, actually get good cases and get them arrested. Now, one of the things I, I've seen that's been very, um, to me, has been very, uh, I guess, enlightening is a lot of them, I'm sure, you know, claim to entrapment and whatnot. But once once you do get it, it's like uh, y'all find massive amounts of uh, things on their computer that uh, are, are not supposed to be there, I guess, would be the best way to put it. I don't want to go into too many no. details but it's it's like yeah they they did something stupid from the beginning they're saying it was just a one time mistake or something like that but uh in these reports I'm reading they've got much much more uh, uh they've got a lot of, of depth there in in as far as their depravity I guess 
Well, and, you know, that's one thing. And this, this applies to, you know, any number of areas of, of primary concern that we have every day, uh, which is everybody in the modern, you know, modern world, modern United States, uh, everybody has phones, has iPads, has computers, has everything, and they record everything on these, whether it's what they're looking at, uh, what they're actually storing, you know, to, to, to what kind of activities they're up to. And, uh, you know, we've, we've had to evolve over the last, really over the last decade in, in bringing in specialized people and specialized equipment. We can, once we get a hold of these devices and we, you know, we have the ability to, to start going into them to actually forensically evaluate. And it's like you said, Matt, there is just a plethora of, of evidence that comes off of them. And, and again, like I said, I wouldn't just zero in on on the, the sex offenders and those types of folks because you know we we see it with uh, everything else we do. The drugs, that's, that's weapons, stuff like thing. that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And uh, you know, if you ever catch some slideshows or whatnot, if I'm giving presentations out in the community, you know, the the vast majority of the pictures you'll see in those are something we've taken off of a device, a phone, or, or whatever the case might be, and. Uh, Nonetheless, like I said, it uh, it really assists us in, in yeah. make, you know building yeah. better cases. You have to love these well, uh, people who are thieves that get on Facebook and start uh, showing all the stuff they've stolen and, and putting up the well, money and a, stuff. That's that's the point I wanted to make sure about. <laughs> it is sometimes it's, it's hard to overstate how dumb criminals can be <laughs> and how dumb most of them are. And a, yeah. a story just a day or two ago about uh, some young man that robbed a store. And then got on Facebook and had holding up the money that he took from the store. Uh, he can't connect dots, can he? Well, and you know, we had one here recently. I was I was watching, you know, while you know that was, they were shooting live while they were being chased by law enforcement, you know, in a pursuit. <laughs> and uh, you know, and just you know, yeah, he's behind us, and here, you know, here's my money that I'm going to use to bond out five minutes after they get me. <laughs> he didn't have that money yeah. once he got caught, did he? <laughs> you know. And, <laughs> and, you know, you're absolutely correct. I mean, sometimes you'd almost want to say it's a little unfair that they make it as easy for us. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> that, that's one that's one percentage of them. But, but we still have some others out there that uh, do have a little bit more wherewithal and do take, yeah. you know, do take. Uh, uh, Those are uh, the ones you, you you turn the dog loose on. Just <laughs> See, I have, I have, Sheriff, I, I don't know if you know this, but I have been the proponent of of a dumb law. When, when, when you run across some of these criminals that are just as dumb, that, that you can't believe how dumb they are, I think, that, I think they should be sentenced to another couple of years in jail just because they're a, they're a menace to society. Well, <laughs> well you, know, there's, you know, there's just no shortage of stories that I could probably, you know, take up. You know your entire morning segments up with, but uh, yeah. yeah, again, sometimes they they uh, they they do some things that I you know I always tell every young new officer getting ready to get started, you know there is a lot of fun to be had doing this job every day, and the primary reason I'll say that to them is because you'll never see it all, and uh, don't be surprised on what can happen on any given day. Yeah. Isn't that the All right. truth? We got to take a quick break. Uh, we'll be right back on News Talk 95.1 FM, 7:90 a.m. Dave uh, Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin with Sheriff uh, of Lubbock County, Kelly Rowe. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin and we're going to go straight to the phones. We've got uh Sheriff Kelly Rowe on the line and um Sheriff, uh, there's uh, there's a lot going on, but one of the big things is that the uh, I guess the county commissioners just made a new budget. Um, mm-hmm. I know that they were able to get uh, pretty much what you asked for. Um, are you happy with everything that happened there with the county commissioners? Yeah, you know, uh, absolutely. We, uh, you know, it was uh, you know a tough tough season. You know, with all these other uh, you know external things going on, and uh, I think we were able to uh, really accomplish some things you know throughout the entire entire process still got some work to do you know we've still got a we've we've still got some challenges ahead of us but uh we uh you know everybody everybody came to to, to work and and uh, i think like i said the the final product was was certainly a big step forward yeah um uh, so do you um uh, one of the things I guess a lot of people have been asking, and I don't know if you know all the numbers yet, but what kind of uh, increase are we looking at as far as deputy pay? Well, uh, there's there's kind of two things 
two things in play there. We had been for a number of years working on a standardized pay scale <clears throat> and trying to get that fully funded and, uh, you know, to where it was self-sufficient. And then, you know, as, as we would move through budget cycles annually, we would be able to, you know, the, if the commissioner's court, you know, made any, you know, made any or added any funds uh, for that, we could adjust the chart up accordingly. This is how you'd see it pretty much standardized throughout the, the country in, in law enforcement. Uh, so we were able to finally get that portion of it finished, and that takes uh, that takes into account uh, individuals that are in positions in their individual positions at the you know the, the longer periods of time. So in other words, in a single position, you know, five years, and then also at the seven year mark. Uh, and then there was also some additional monies to uh, increase the overall chart up about a thousand, a little over a thousand dollars, almost eleven hundred. Uh, across the board. So again, uh, you know, it took it it, it 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 made some steps for us, and that uh, that helps tremendously. But we've unfortunately, you know, the downside is is we just you know we we just we've hit a gap now where you know as we were discussing the budget, you know, we were you know we're literally losing staff for an immediate twenty five percent increase uh, just to other local other local law enforcement so again uh, this 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 really will help this hits a lot of the position areas where uh, i think we were losing pretty much a majority of our folks from so hopefully that'll slow and stem some of that while we continue to work you know work over the next couple of years to to narrow those gaps back down and keep us really competitive with uh, all our other area law enforcement well hey sheriff uh, let me ask you we've got a texture this morning that he wants to know uh from the sheriff, what's the demographics of your department? And basically, what are you doing to recruit more minority <clears throat> officers? Well, uh, you know, again, we've got uh, we've got you know multi approaches we we use on this, and and I don't want to deviate too far, but just to tell you that uh, you know, with the, the nation the way it is right now, and how we've been the last number of years. Uh, you know, recruiting has become far more challenging. And, uh, you know, there's been some national assessments talking about as much as a 65% reduction in, in applications, new applications for law enforcement corrections. So, you know, we we work really hard, you know, to hit that from, you know, all different avenues, uh, you know, try to catch the veterans when they're, you know, when they're leaving, you know, leaving active duty. And all of that, and like I said, I'm really proud of our agency because we are, you know, we are very diverse when you look at uh, across, you know, across all divisions and all departments. And uh, you know, we've got a, you know, very, uh, you know, effective, uh, you know, group of, of men and women. And uh, you know, as I as I say in our recruiting video, you know, from all uh, backgrounds, talents, and ages. So again, it's uh, the the folks that work on that every day and uh, work the social media and get out to the job fairs and get to some of these military bases that are nearby. We've got these, like I said, got a lot of these uh, these military folks coming out. Uh, we're, we're getting it from all angles. So let me ask well, you. Uh, well, ask... Let, me, let me ask this real quick, man. Mm -hmm. You know, this, 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 just go, this just blows me away, uh, Sheriff. Uh, reported yesterday that the Minneapolis City Council is alarmed <laughs> mm -hmm. by the surge in crime months after voting. Uh, what a shot! Defund the police. You now, cause and effect. You know, if anybody, you know, they, they have to be the only people with half a degree of wherewithal that would be in any way surprised at the the result of uh, the decisions they've been making up there, and any other communities that are making similar type of decisions. I mean, this is we've seen this over and over again, and if you've studied any degree of history. Of, of what happens when you, you know, when you back law enforcement completely back and you don't support law enforcement. When I say that, not necessarily vocally, but your funding and you, you support what they need to do to get their missions completed every day, we see this. And, uh, you know, you've seen some of these cities have massive turnarounds when leadership has changed and, and uh, you know, tourism starts, you know, dwindling down to nothing because people don't want to, you know, come to those places because of a fear of being mugged or, you know, or worse. And uh, so, again, it's, it's, it's the, the, that city council has to be the only ones that are actually surprised at, uh, at this outcome because, again, they're trying to drive some things that 
I, I get that there's a lot of reform issues in terms of, you know, how we try to how do we we try to re- rehabilitate? Okay. How Sheriff, we try to address mental mental health? Yes, sir. Uh, we've got about ten seconds. Can you hang over for another segment? Absolutely. All right. We'll be right back with Sheriff Kelly Rowe on News Talk ninety five point one FM seven ninety AM KFYO. Welcome back to Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin. We have uh, Sheriff Kelly Rowe on the phone. We're going to uh, get right back to him. Uh, Sheriff, one of the questions, kind of uh, following up on what we were talking about, is have you seen uh, any movement from these uh, police departments that have been defunded like Austin um, and even those that are running into some issues like Dallas and uh, San Antonio? Have you seen any uh, officers leaving those areas and, and coming to places like Lubbock? Well, we're certainly hearing stories. Uh, you know, uh, one one more recent was to, to be watching Colorado because of some of the recent legislation they passed up there, and in, in terms of uh, you know putting placing more you know liability on the individual officers and some of this. And so, haven't so much from you know here in Texas, but these are also in some of those examples you gave some agencies that are seeing numbers of issues, having, you know, leadership changes pretty frequently. And, uh, again, you create the, you, you, when you create this environment of instability with, with law enforcement, you know, again, your outcomes aren't going to be where, they, where you want them to be. Uh, you know, the, we, we try to reinforce with our staff all the time, you know, ignore 99% of what you're hearing because it's just absolutely, uh, uh, you know, a, fictitious image of, of, of what modern, you know, law enforcement looks like and has looked like for years. We certainly haven't reverted uh, back 40 years, you know, in, in how we do our business every day. And so, again, you know, this is this is a group of people that we asked to do one of the most dangerous missions in our, you know, in our country. And uh, they have to know they're supported. And uh, so, yeah, it's uh, it's something that's impacting the profession across the board. But uh, uh, the more we see some of these local governments make some of the decisions they're making, you're gonna you're you're gonna hit it on the head, Matt. We're gonna we're well, gonna see a lot of I, migration. Hey, sheriff, I want to know: Are you seeing any anything anywhere where in in Lubbock where you're seeing a lack of support by the populace? Absolutely not. Uh, you know, I was just speaking to I'm one of our civic to that. groups yesterday and. And, uh, you know, said that very thing that we are so fortunate here in Lubbock that, uh, you know, I hate to say we're kind of in a bubble, but uh, nonetheless, the support has been, you know, his, his, his state is constant as it ever is. And uh, it's, 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 it's refreshing, and I think it, it really truly helps, you know, our troops and their morale and, and all that to know yeah. that they are very much appreciated for the, the work they do. Well, Sheriff, I would think that uh, anyone listening to this program who, uh, is not being is in your line of work and who's not being supported might be uh, wise to check in on the career opportunities at the uh, Lubbock County Sheriff's Office. We'll take all of them we can we can certainly get. Uh, you know, I tell tell the new ones when I, if I if I'm talking to them, they I know what they what it's taken for them to get there, and and uh, they we can we can always use that many more. You know, well, very very good candidates. I've I've always said they have the toughest job in the world. And, uh, you know, just to pull a car over and walk up to it, you never know what you're walking up on. And it's, it's a dangerous job, and I don't care how much you pay them, it ain't enough. So um, during, during all this COVID-19, uh, I guess you could say crisis, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. um, have we seen a rise in uh, both thefts and, and uh, what about violent crimes? Have we seen a rise in that, uh, that due to what seems to be uh, COVID-19? Well, I, you know, again, the, the tie to COVID-19 is that when, you know, particularly in the beginning when this really started to blow up and, you know, the first talk of, uh, you know, locking down and, you know, staying at home and all that. And as law enforcement, because we have a mission that can't stop, you know, we can't just we can't just stop what we're doing because of anything. We've got to respond to calls and. But we did slow a lot of things down to minimize exposure, and as a result of that, we did see some upticks uh, a short time into you know into into this time period. And so, you know, the most obvious, unfortunately, is we see we see a lot of the narcotics and gang-driven violence uh, with the drive-by shootings. Those are happening with pretty great frequency. We've been taking a lot of steps to start tamping that back down. 
but unfortunately, as much as we might have slowed down traffic enforcement and some of those types of things, uh, you know, like I said, to protect the officers and keep our workforce uh, in a position to respond, uh, that element, you know, did take a little advantage of it. And, uh, and again, their, their, their competitiveness and, and uh, what they're trying to do uh, has just led to where, you know, we've seen some, you know, some record numbers, unfortunately, this year with regard to that type of violence. Uh, in terms of any other, you know, particularly or particular specific crime metric, uh, nothing really comes to mind that's a standout that we've seen, you know, say more of or necessarily less of. But the violent crime uh, in terms of, like I said, the shootings and, and these types of things has certainly been on the uptick, and that's, that's certainly now driving our focus. What, what about, uh, and, and I know this is something people don't like to talk about, but what about suicides? Have we seen an uptick in that um, or, or things connected to depression? Uh, I can't. I, as we're sitting here talking right now, I, again, I can't tell you of anything that has stood out. Okay. Um, uh, in, in terms of, you know, just you know, we, 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 we would think we would see a significant number. You know, we've been... We've been real cautious through all this. We were, you know, we were concerned about things that would be much easier to conceal, uh, child abuse, those types of things, and kind of expected that once kids started returning to school after these long hiatuses, that uh, you know, would we would we start seeing you know a lot more cases of that that have basically gone undetected, um, and in some cases, I think there's some truth to that. Uh, but overall, like I said, there's not a whole lot of things that have. You know that, like I said, have kind of rose, risen up, and and uh, you know, kind of stand out in terms of you know significant change. Other than, like I said, we just we're you know the you guys are reading the headlines every day, and you can see what we're what we're seeing with regard to. We had a you know just yesterday at you know two o'clock in the afternoon had a drive by. A an odd time that time at the type of day. Fortunately, no one was injured, but uh, you know the that's just they're, they're happening almost on a daily if not every other daily basis so we're we're really having to focus on that okay uh can you stay one more segment for us uh, mm-hmm. uh okay I've, I've just got some questions uh one more question that's that uh i'd like to ask we'll be right back on news talk 95.1 fm 790 am kfyo welcome back to mornings with dave king and matt martin we're talking to sheriff kelly Rowe here in lubbock uh county of lubbock uh, and sheriff, one of the things I know that the sheriff's department, I believe, uh, uh, or it may be the constables, but uh, the evictions have have uh, we, do we still have a moratorium here in Lubbock over evictions, or are we seeing uh, uh, evictions happen? Well, you're absolutely right. That that primarily falls over to the constables' offices because those are generated up through our JP courts. Um, but uh, interestingly, I was talking to one of the JPs just recently, and. And uh, it's my understanding that uh, I think most of the moratoriums are still in place right now. So with, with there may be some some exceptions to that, but I think for the most part, uh, I think that is all still in place uh, until they start waving off some of this. Okay. Um, the, so uh, as as far as um, also traffic violations, uh, have we kind of upticked back up to where we were uh, pre COVID nineteen for for stopping and getting the officers out, uh, stopping people for traffic violations. Yeah, I think you're. I think you're seeing kind of overall that most of those things that we slowed down on, um, those types of operations like that, have pretty well resumed to normal. And of course, and again, I don't. I, I don't ever want to seem like I'm speaking for any other any other agency. But you know, the one thing is, as you guys know, driving around Lubbock, we've got lots of road construction going on on some of our more major thoroughfares, I-27 and south loops and some of that so i think yes they i i certainly see it um you know as i'm as i'm traveling uh the fact that we're you know trying to keep some of these motorists slowed down a little bit through a lot of these construction zones and whatnot but uh i think overall you you we've pretty well returned resumed back to what i would consider normal operations okay and and one question i've, I've had people ask me and, and i'm pretty sure i know the answer to this but uh uh, people want to know: Are are the sheriff's department, the police department, other other things? Uh, are they actively going after those not wearing masks? Uh, no, well, no. Uh, well, again, speaking solely for the sheriff's office, right? Um, you know, and I, I I issued a statement when that order went out um, that uh, 
you know, unfortunately that order, you know, had had language in it that made it unenforceable. And uh, because there was a clear, clear statement in there that individuals could not be detained over a potential mask violation. So that makes it difficult and challenging for law enforcement to, you know, try to engage into those. Now, I left, you know, left room in there because of, uh, you know, private business uh, choices and options. And if there was issues there, we would still respond to uh, any calls if there was, you know, any type of uh, disturbance or anything as a result of some of that. We haven't seen anything, you know, along those lines. But uh, in terms of just uh, officers, you know, approaching somebody without a mask on and a certain area, no, we just simply because we don't have the capability, um, you know, to, to enforce anything there. And so y'all haven't had any issues with, like, I know that, that you see the videos all over the country, mm-hmm. but of, of people, th- uh, you know, uh, that get asked to leave a, a place, throwing uh, fits, getting the, the police called on them? Not to my knowledge, um, you know, but again, we're the county that, right, no, I understand uh, that. that we don't have as much opportunity for those types of things to happen. Um, you know, and, and we're not, you know, not uh, not near the number of, uh, you know, kind of public businesses. So I haven't seen, had, or heard any of those. Like I said, we've been we've been paying close attention to it because, again, these are these are situations where we're somewhat between a rock and a hard place in a lot of ways. And and uh, you know, they do is some of those examples you talk about es- can escalate. And uh, we certainly don't need to be getting into situations over you know, something like a mask that ends up in a use of force or something, again, like some of those examples you've seen. So, yeah. Thank uh, you. again, yes, sir. Uh, you know, one of the things that you uh, told us back some time ago and that I was unaware of is that you, that the heads of uh, uh, law enforcement, like you and the, the uh, LPD, the chief, and the DPS head and uh, Texas Rangers, you guys get together like once a month, I believe, and uh, for well, a quarter, breakfast, but... yes, we've got uh, uh, you know the the director, the regional director of DPS and the police chief, and I. You know, we all enjoy a close relationship. Uh, again, COVID is has hindered that in some cases because a lot of yeah. times that could be, you know, breakfast or something like that, just to just to be able to sit down and and well, uh, visit I, about I issues. Just, and... I was just way impressed with the fact that you guys did that because I know that. Yeah. In law enforcement, a lot of times territory uh, infringements are an issue. Now, we have a new police chief, and uh, we mm-hmm. haven't talked about that since that time. And I'm just I'm curious, as is, is the new police chief, has is he, is he worked into uh, this camaraderie that we have uh, with, right. with the departments? Absolutely. And, in fact, I just saw him a couple of days ago, and we both said the same thing, that we were way overdue for, you know, getting a chance to sit down and, and uh, have one of those, but we and just just I think to Matt's point too, we also you know we also do and what we did up until COVID, uh, you know have all of the area chiefs, and so when you get a lot of folks, a lot of law enforcement from out of town, particularly like federal agencies, they're always they're always commenting you know on uh, how you know how close all the agencies are, how well they work together, and of course the best part of the whole deal is the results they yield. Uh, by way of those relationships. Yeah. All right. Well, Sheriff, we want to thank you for coming on. Um, we uh, we're just running out of time, but uh, we'll have to have you on again very soon. Uh, we love to have you, and, and you always have some of the best stories as well. So, thank you for coming on. Absolutely, guys. Always enjoy it with y'all. Have a great weekend, and I'll yeah. look forward to talking to you soon. All right. Thanks, hey, uh, Sheriff be in Kelly Rowe. Yeah. Sheriff Kelly Rowe, uh, thanks for coming on. We're uh, going to have to go to a quick break. News Talk 95.1 FM, 790 AM KFYO. Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin. We'll be right back.